The Jewish Genetic Disease Consortium is made up of a group of individual foundations and organizations, each of whom focus on a single Jewish genetic disorder. We've banded together to create awareness for all of the Jewish genetic disorders and the need for individuals to be tested. One in five Ashkenazi Jews are carriers for a Jewish genetic disease. A very, very simple blood test gives you all the information that you need to know about whether or not you're a carrier for any of the 16 Jewish genetic diseases. To consider this information when you're starting a family is so absolutely necessary. The hardship that comes with having a child with a Jewish genetic disease is truly considerable and it's avoidable. When I was pregnant with Lauren, I happened to have been pregnant with a very good friend of mine. It was being excited together and buying maternity clothes together, and it was our first child. And I anticipated her birth the same way anybody anticipates the birth of any child, especially a first child, including the first grandchild on both sides. So when Lauren was not meeting milestones and my friend's children were, it was very painful. You know, inside I knew something was wrong, but I didn't want to know it. And my husband is a physician, and he also did not want to play that role of a physician. He was Lauren's dad. We're calling daddy. My third child was Jonathan. I unfortunately had to have um, termination between of a positive amnio. Jonathan was born I had an amnio, was sent to Israel, and I got a phone call that his amnio looked good. I sensed some hesitation in the voice of the doctor in Israel, but when I called him on it, he said, no, 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 everything's okay. And at about three months, I felt that Jonathan was not okay. I just felt he wasn't doing things he should be doing, and everyone told me I was crazy. And I was too focused on Lauren. At 10 months, Everyone started to believe me, and we took him for diagnostic tests, and he was positive for ML4. Hey, look how tall you are. Hey, you want to dance? I remember so clearly when my husband came home with the results of Jonathan's test. I remember being upstairs in my bedroom, and you know, you've seen it in the movies, and I just crumbled to the floor. I think the grief that I've had to deal with as the mom of two children with ML4, it's something that, you know, I said to my mom, I remember falling into her arms when Jonathan was diagnosed and saying, you never told me this could happen. Oh, God, thank you. I love you. You always wonder what's going on in that mind. Mm. Something's there that I'll never know, and it hurts. It just hurts a lot. Do they love you? Those are your sisters. And what about Lauren? I lay down in bed with her and I'll just start crying. And I put her hand on my head and I hug her. But the tears run down my eyes and it's like, what? what's going on? What are you thinking? Do you know how much I love you? You know, it's like, you know I'll always be with you. I was kissing you. I'm thrilled to say that I was at the helm of the ML4 organization when the gene was discovered. And that was probably one of the most exciting days um, because we knew that the screening test would be accurate and parents would not have to live through what we did with counting cells and possibly having discrepancies. I would tell any prospective parent that screening is available. I think they should be screened for ML4 and the 15 other diseases they could be screened for, which will empower them before having children to make a decision that's right for them as a couple. I think that having that power gives them the ability to choose, which we didn't have. When Evan was about 13 months old, we just happened to go to an ophthalmologist and he, midway through the exam, found this cherry red spot on Evan's retina. We had researched all possible things that could be wrong with Evan, and as soon as he said that, I knew what was wrong with him. We called our neurologist from the office. He said to me this was the missing link to the puzzle. 
and it was confirmed that Evan had Tay-Sachs. Even though Jeff and I knew from the moment that Evan was diagnosed that, that he was not going to live much past five, and Evan died when he was just about four and a half, we were shocked the day he died. We were shocked. So even though you know, when it happens, it just takes you by complete surprise. I try to think back from when Evan was born and how I would have pictured what our life would have been like. I see how friends of mine are now with children who are Evan's age. I try to imagine myself having a son who's a sophomore in high school or a son who plays on a high school sports team or a son who's just about to start driving and, and I try to picture what it would be like Having Evan taken from us made us realize we needed to turn what happened to him into something more positive because otherwise it just can consume you and you can just sit in a dark room all the time and never want to get out. So we really tried to focus the bad things that happened to us, turning it into something good by making people aware of the diseases and the importance of being screened. There's nothing worse than um, having your child pass away in your arms in your own home.